Hello, hello, hello. Uh, thank you, our dear viewer, for joining us once again on this uh, live show. So today we are hosting a young change maker who is a farmer from Machakos County, and he's going to share with us his journey, uh, even in the field of agriculture, and specifically what he deals with in matters agriculture. I am your host, Dr. Violet Mbiti. So let me welcome to the studio, Emmanuel Mutoa. Hi, Emmanuel. Hi, Dr. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, I'm well, I'm well. Welcome to the studio and kindly introduce yourself so that the viewer can get to learn more about you. So, uh, Dr. Violet, thank you for the invite. I'm very humbled to be uh, in this um, amazing studio. And um, so let me uh, tell the viewers whom I am. So I'm Emmanuel Mutua um, Kidoka. I have a confirmation name as for those who are of um, Catholic faith. We normally have confirmation name. I'm Emilio, for your information. That is my other <laughs> name. Yeah, so okay. all those names are mine. I'm Emmanuel, I'm Emilio, I'm Mutua, then my father is Kidoka. That is who, uh, those are my names. Um, I'm a Kenyan youth. Um, um, also, a leader, I'm the chairperson of Kakamaka Youth Group, which is based here in Niata. Um, Majakos County, uh, we, uh, my youth group is also a member of Majakos County CSO network, it's registered there. Um, also, I'm a farmer, of course, actually, uh, but um, uh, I directly or indirectly uh, go to the field because farming is uh, diverse. Uh, you know, there is a um, value chain system in agriculture. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I'm also doing uh, farming personally. I'm, I'm having a farm at this time. Also, I'm, I'm a youth activist. Actually, by the year 2020, I was in uh, Kenya Defenders uh, Coalition um, Academy. So I was in the academy I pursued. What is the pursuit there in the academy? I was uh, actually mentored. Um, several modules uh, concerning uh, socioeconomic empowerment, um, documentation, and um, reporting. Um, yeah, so apart from being um, an activist, a youth activist, also I'm a leader, actually, in our sub-county, actually, um, uh, I sit in for the sub-county stakeholders forum, which is chaired by our DCC. So of course, I'm a leader. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so I'm a leader. Uh, of late, of late, I've been sitting for the National Youth Council. You saw it was in the, it was in the uh, channels, the local and international channel that we participated very much in, uh, they just concluded. Uh, election, August elections. Actually, youth of this nation, I need to tell them they did uh, a very good job in maintaining peace, even during and now after election. Actually, it has never been like this peaceful with the Kenyan youth. We know uh, whom we've been before, but uh, I want to comment that the Kenyan youth apart from we participated in sensitizing, sensitizing the youth, but they have shown that um, youth cannot only uh, be used to draw stones, they can also act as a, a vessel to instill uh, peace in a nation and uh, actually in the whole world at large. So, uh, so my area of profession is develop community development. Nimona, um, Kidogo, uh, so I, I want to go back to school and pursue my master's. <laughs> yeah, so that is whom I am. Um, 
in a nutshell. I don't want to say my status. I don't want to disappoint Kenyan chicks. And, yeah, so that is who, are, who I am. <laughs> Okay, okay. So um, that, let's so let's get right into it. So, yeah. uh, what inspired you to to venture into farming? Okay, good, good question. So, personally, uh, I've already stated that farming is not uh, a must. You go to the farm and actually farm. There is a, a very big gap in um, in farming. So. Personally, I was actually um, nearly part of Changomoto, seeing the Kenyan youth. Like, Kenyan youth have inspired me because now, so when you leave campus and you come back to the uh, field, you like waiting to get that office, I mean, white collar job. And apparently, you know, the number of, the number of people who are transiting from uh, colleges and universities ha are not. Uh, are not fitting in the, the shoes of the the, the, the the posts available for absorbing people. So uh, you see that mismatch. There are a lot of people who look, uh, there are a lot of youth living um, institution coming to jobs and the jobs, you know, they are very, very minimum. So, um, so I, I just sat, I called myself for a meeting and of course, now having democratic, I mean, uh, demographically looked at the Kenyan um, number of youths living campus and uh, the position which are available. So I was like, is it so much that you sit in the office or you be employed by the government for you to have a decent uh, life? No. So I said, no, we can. Uh, we, we can make uh, other ways of making a living. So um, I sat down and I looked upon um, the avenues in agriculture that youth can venture in. And one of those uh, avenues is uh, participating in value addition. What, I, what do I mean? So uh, like, for example, there's a program that, our, that is being run by Machakos County and uh, Nyeri, yeah, Nyeri to be precise, called the Aquaculture Development, uh, ABDP, that is the issues for Aquaculture Business Development Program. And um, actually, the, the mastermind of this program, they had uh, youth uh, at their honor. Because, you know, uh, Kenyan youth, uh, actually it's not Kenyan youth, but in Africa, there's that... Um, analogy of youth don't have right to have land. You will agree with me that uh, uh, above 75% of Kenyan youth don't have, not even 75. Like there is almost 90, 90 plus percent of Kenyan youth don't have title deeds for any land. Yeah, you will agree with me or in case you don't agree with me, it's good that you, <laughs> you let me know. So uh, having that in mind, Dr. Ari, um, you see that uh, you going to the farm, you, you, like, for example, the family's land and demanding sometimes this uh, egg shake. So I looked upon this program and I, Actually, I, when they were looking for youth champions across the county, actually, personally, I was like, this was the chance I was waiting for. Yeah, because now, the, uh, the way this program has been um, uh, doctored, like, they've taken that um, the youth, they want to empower the youth. That, um, for example, you want to start a fish joint, per se. You know, that's, uh, that's, that's a vein, uh, uh, value chain for fish. Are you getting me? So yeah. you can now procure the fish from the farmer. Of course, you know, our, our Buddhists, our parents, they have their own house of that land where the fish ponds and those towns are, um, are, are situated, right? So uh, like now you can now 
uh, bridge the gap between the farmer and the final um, consumer of the fish, right? So this is um everything. Because now um you know uh owing to the fact that we don't have uh access to our very own land whereby we can practice that intensive farming. So um now this program I will, I was actually uh, coming to show you what this program actually has uh, brought up and why I'm sinking inside with even my shoes. So this program has actually, um, uh, is assisting the youth to, for example, you want to begin a fish joint. And uh, you know, like fish, uh, it's very, highly uh, variable. So now it will assist us as a youth to purchase. Actually, they will procure for us the like the deep freezers. You know, the cost of like a decent deep freezer, the, the Kenyan cost now, it's uh, not less than 100, 100 Gs, that is 100,000. And um, a Kenyan youth, and then you tell them now, purchase this. And that is just a one amount it you require in in uh, this actually a fish value chain you need a uh, mode of transport you know so uh, personally um, I sat down when this program came and uh, imagined how uh, like uh, a brand like Galitos began Galitos began just um, uh, it was figure to come to then I can think about it then uh, we even have galitos at, across then and it's a brand so um, now that Kenyan youth um, they just need um, a land or two just uh, be somewhere whereby now they can maneuver their own life having a tip to initiate um, an economic, uh, uh, an economic way of living. I mean, something that can stimulate uh, income uh, in our day-to-day -day life. That is all what Kenyan youth need. Because now, um, you know, like these other uh, our 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 parents, and these other people all die. Um, like, for example, someone can just take a long book to bank them, get a loan. But now, <laughs> the Kenyan youth, owing to the Hata Fuliza, when I put him up, so down. So, who in his Kupata capital, he acquired the Shaki to come by, come a pigeon, Ama Kusumwa to cafe. Oh, Napata Nigori, it's a problem. So, um, this is a program currently I'm running. I have a, I'm the chair of that group, and uh, the program has given that uh, that program to us as a as a group. And actually, we are pursuing the thing. We like we like sixty percent. We are gone. Actually, we're waiting for the procurement of those gadgets. We've already submitted our proposals, and yeah, soon, uh, soon, and very soon, I think uh, will be sort of employment for. Um, uh, a big number of kids, not less than 10 in one fish joint called this transport logistics from the, uh, the the farmer to the to the to the fish joint and um, upon beginning with one opening another one and another one you can imagine uh, the number of youth that would be uh, directly be employed from the fish that is uh, being farmed our very own Homes which we have, we don't have say in those land. And you see, we still doing farming. If you like, if you you will agree with me. Then also we do fish pond um, digging. Actually, you know, like um, you might be wanting, you, you might be in a position to do fish farming. But you know, uh, like uh, here in uh, East Africa. You know that the climate uh, is a bit tricky, and there are those um, environmental 
um, condition that you have a fish farming. So for anyone who is willing, willing to, who has, has access to Big England, they want to be dug a decent fish pond, they can um, always contact us. Actually, we do, we, hey, actually we, we design and dig for you a decent fish pond. Yeah, so for your information, um, a good fish pond uh, as standard measurement of uh, depth of 1.5 and um, a, a width of 15 and length of 20 meters. So it's good that you know. And um, there are people who dig very deep. Uh, you just uh, call excavator exa or forklift. You end up digging a like um, a fish pond of like three to four, five meters. You know, at the depth. Um. Emmanuel. Yeah. So I think there is a network issue there but you you had for yourself um he he, he um emmanuel engages in uh, fish farming and he started it off with his youth group and now he's heading uh he's heading machakos he's leading machakos county in matters um Uh, making aquaculture, increasing awareness with regard to aquaculture. So, um, not many people engage in fish farming. You find that most, uh, most of the people now engage in maybe different types of farming, but it is a delight to see that, uh, that to see, to see that Emmanuel and his team decided that they would like to be in the value chain of fish farming and be able even to deliver, to act as the in-between, between the farmer and even the consumer. So the other thing that, uh, that is coming out clearly even from the discussion, he has mentioned that uh, what is impeding young youth from engaging in agriculture is lack of land. And that is very true because you find that uh, the land that is available is owned by, is owned by our, our, our parents. So you find that the youth don't have any land. And even this reminds me of a time like five years ago uh, there is an article that I had written in the newspaper, which was published by the staff, where we were encouraging, we, we, we were speaking to the government, and I was telling, the, I was telling them that there is need for them to allocate uh, land to youth so that they can engage in farming, because personally, I believe that farming Farming itself is one of the instruments that can be used to alleviate poverty. And the case study for that was, was Egypt. You found that uh, the government of Egypt allocated land to the youth. And because of that, the youth there prospered. Even universities uh, opened up in, the, in that particular area where they were given the land because it was in a desert region. So the youth took advantage of that opportunity and, uh, and, 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 and prospered. So it's a message even to the Kenyan government because even with the current government that is in place that is led by His Excellency William Ruto, for them to also think about this, because you find that the government owns land in mass, but yet you find that it is idle land. 
So if it is possible for them to provide the subsidies, to provide the input and all the resources that are needed and, and provide even, even capital itself, eh, you will find that these youth uh, are going to prosper. Because personally, I believe the, the Kazim Tani, Kazim Tani, you know, it's like it was just covering. It's like even if you are a, someone who has graduated from university, you are still going to do the same job as someone who has not uh, yet even gone to university. And you see, there is no there is no equality that was taken into consideration even when they were coming up with the program. Okay. Because someone who has gone to university has cleared, has gotten a certificate. And now they are being told that they go and sweep the streets of Nairobi or whichever region that they are in. So I, I don't, it wasn't a well th thought, out, uh, thought out program because it just lumped all the youth together. It didn't disaggregate the youth so as to know what kind of programs they are going to give to the different, the different categories of youth. Okay? Yeah. So... I think that uh, even what uh, what Emmanuel is saying is uh, is really going to enable other youth to also engage in fish farming. So, come go to the studio, Emmanuel. You had disappeared for a minute. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Actually, my router has misbehaved. I'm so sorry. It's okay. You may continue. You may continue. Yeah, so I was now, I was like uh, urging that um, if Kenyan youth could just wake up and come to full realization of that, our parents are not, uh, not yet ready to permit us to use their very own land. And uh, uh, just take that as a challenge and um, act on it and venture in uh, the value chain of not even uh, fish farming only, but also, you know, there is this uh, issue, whole issue of, about uh, cereals. And you know, uh, National Cereals and Produce Board have uh, actually give tenders to the Kenyan people. And of course, we know uh, under the Procu uh, Procurement Act that uh, 30% that, that is uh, given for uh, marginalized groups, that is the PWDs, women and youth, um, if the government could now uh, be ready to do to, to act upon uh, full actualization of Article 55 of the Constitution, uh, could now uh, give the Kenyan youth these um, tenders to supply the serious to the, uh, the National Serious and Pronounced Board. Mm. Uh, we've seen we've seen what um, the government has been doing. Actually, it was just last year when you saw a wool MP supplying it. Then apparently did an economic crime for us. And um, you see how the, the law is taking too long to just put these people uh, in behind the bus, but. Um, if now that we have new uh, main uh, leadership, so I'm urging the, the Kenya Kwanza government now to take this as a challenge. And if they mean good for the Kenyan youth, they need to actualize that Article 55 of the Constitution that um, keeps the government. Uh, um, on this uh, whole issue about Kenyan youth, uh, if they mean good and want to empower youth, they need to actually uh, put it as a regulation, or actually they they put an um, they put it uh, they legislate a law that will bar these big fishes of the state to do those procurement to them national mm. entity yeah so otherwise um the other thing i didn't uh, i mentioned earlier on that i'm doing farming 
unpleasant about uh, like me a makeup plus and I do I farm greens uh, I farm spinach I farm terere I uh, wish I could uh, have in my gallery I have some several uh, I think if I will be having an opportunity I will share with you some of um, the things that I do farm I farm colors uh, I farm um, tomatoes and sometimes when I uh, when I have plenty of the time uh, just to be around Nalima, Nalima Mishiri, but it's a bit hectic. You know, French beans need a lot of uh, uh, input, that is fertilizers and stuff. And you know, the Kenyan economy is not so favorable to us. Yeah, so, and uh, then there is this other, then there is this other issue of water, which is a major challenge. Um, yeah, like now, um, where I farm for the couple of three to four weeks, imagine I could be like once in a week. As we talk, Yata Canal doesn't have water, pass, even uh, pass the, 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 the treatment plan. That is um, like five kilometers, um, I'm five kilometers down the, the water treatment um, uh, stuff. Yeah, so they, there's no water for the last like, Three weeks, and you can imagine if I had uh, French beans in my farm, yeah, it would be long gone. So beautiful. I think um, both county and national government, you know, Mananchi ni moja. So if they can combine their their their, their, their priorities and their expenditure on just one thing, they, like water. In one physical year, they can be done. If the, the county and national crop prioritize one thing at a time. So, it's a major challenge. Yeah, so that is majorly what I do. Um, alongside other things, you know, I'm also a part of the community and I'm having a lot of engagement with the, the, the Kenyan youth. Yeah, so. Yeah, so I think where you need clarity, you can always tell me. Okay, all right. Yes. So, um, have you been practicing uh, like now the farming? Okay, personally, since I left um, college, that is some almost five, five to six years ago. Um, I didn't just okay. sit down or start. Marking. I when there then apparently when my 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 dad passed on uh, due to cancer that was the year 2016 and uh, uh, being a good boy he had blessed me with that piece of land that I do farm so um, I didn't see the need just to go to the market and just uh, start. So I thought like I can just take my time and um, put the energy that I'm blessed with and the, the youth are blessed with a lot of energy. And you can believe you me that um, I do supply. I, I've been supplying uh, magnitude uh, substance in the local market. Yeah. yeah. Sorry? Did you start with? Um, you're not so clear, Dr. Oh, well, I'm saying? Yes, yes, now I can hear you. How much money uh, did you have, uh, or how much capital uh, did you use to start uh, your business of farming? Ah, good, good question. Like, uh, initially, initially, um, I was working with another organization and uh, I had my contract that was running for like 30,000. It was like 35,000, the contract. Then I said, with 35,000, I think I can, I can, you know, in farming, if you want to do like, uh, you, you just need um, a machine, piping. So I did piping and machines. 
in my farm. I could only reach in beer pipes chini and uh, uh, used now uh, the balance to purchase seedlings. Personally, nikaji wakia kwa nasari then. Yeah, that that is how I entered farming. Ah, yes. mm, awesome, awesome, awesome. Mm. So, are there any challenges that you have encountered so far? Um, yeah, 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 and a number, a number. I've just mentioned the challenge of water. You, you've just had me mention. Yeah. Even as I talk, there is no water in uh, the, the water that I normally use. And um, I traverse uh, Kenya a lot. Um, I traverse Kenya a lot, and this is not a, a challenge here in Machiakos. Um, uh, yeah, I've been to Kitui, I've been to Makweni, I've been, uh, I've been moving around, I've been to, to Kisumu, yeah, the other time. Yeah, so I know water is a challenge as far as farming is concerned. You can't do farming. Actually, farming ile ya kutoa vitu shambani. Cereals, mm. the, uh, veggies, and um, the, you can't do it without water. How will you do it? So uh, mm. I think these are, it's one of the major challenges. Then the other one is about um, uh, actually finance. You know, you can't utatoa wapi pesa ya mafuta in case now you want to pump water. Mm. You know, you know, mvua. Mvua, oh, rain now. Uh, yeah, yeah. Rain has been a challenge, you know. Mm. If water, is, if rain is a challenge now, that's why, why you just had me mention that. If the county and the national government can work for the common good of um, not even youth, the common one inch, and uh, just tackle the issue of water once and for all, I think. The issue about land, I think that will come later, but what has been the challenge then, the next one is the finance, you know. Kofuliza, help when I could die. And uh, CRB, other ways, the Mishwari, you know, you know it, it's a major challenge. Uh, yeah. Then the other challenge in your land. You, you doesn't. Um, if, you know, I've born and raised here in Kenya, and um, I've, been, I've been moving to the other parts of, I mean, other countries, <clears throat> I can't hesitate to say that uh, land and youth are two different things in different WhatsApp groups. So, I think we need to do away with those um, cultural beliefs that say that uh, these young people um, need to be given time or they are not to occupy land like you'll sell and you know uh, those awkward um, backward beliefs I think they should be uh, not uh, at this 21st century uh, they shouldn't be occurring so land I just mentioned land, water, and uh, financial muscle are the major challenges towards um, farming. Yeah. So, yeah. So I'd like you to address uh, a fellow youth, uh, maybe who's watching uh, this show, and they are unemployed. And. Uh, they don't know what to do. Some of them maybe have just uh, are just grad graduating from uh, high school, and they don't know what to do with their life. So, mm, come on. Uh, I'd like you to speak to them and uh, just give a word of encouragement. Can you hear me now? Okay, it seems like the network is having issues. Um, it's going to join in a, in a few. So you've had uh, for yourself the challenges that uh, Emmanuel has, uh, has highlighted, 
like like there's need for uh, capital, there's need for water, there's need for land. And if the government, the national government now tackles it, uh, it's going to uh, help uh, it's going to encourage more youth to engage in agriculture. You know, sometimes you find that the national government is always saying that the youth should engage in agriculture, but they are not putting in place like now the infrastructure to make agriculture favorable. And that is why you found that uh, over the years here, even in Kenya, you find that uh, most people have been selling their land so that they can engage in uh, in real estate okay so because you find that even the government is very quick in signing policies but when it comes also to implementation to ensure that the policies that have been put in place with regards to agriculture they have not they, they it's like implementation is very slow okay so it is very essential for the government to note what uh, what Emmanuel is saying. So Emmanuel, so um, as we were con as we are concluding, I wanted you to address a fellow youth uh, who's who's given up on life to the ones who have just graduated from college or from high school and they don't know what to do. Maybe their parents are telling them to engage in farming, but they are saying farming for what? Eh? So I would like you to speak to them and uh, as to why they should uh, with, uh, why they should engage in farming, or just any a word of of motivation or encouragement. So over to you, Emmanuel. Oh, good. So um, to my fellow youth watching, me worry. Uh, in this state and uh, other states who are watching, um, we need to understand that um, the white collar jobs we've been uh, getting up and aspiring to have, uh, they are very limited. And whenever now you just like graduated from a campus and you have at least somewhere whereby you can do farming, huh? it pays, it pays, it just pays. You only then need to come and uh, and accept the fact that we can't all fit in those uh, government offices. So, um, farming, farming, it is just a matter of kujitoa, kujitoa, kujitoma. We are blessed with energy, energy and time. The, the amount of time we are using um, in social media. Um, a video watching those funny funny stuff there uh, and the energy we are having that's us um i think we're using the time and the energy we are having as young people i think you're good to go hmm? yeah, so um utilize the energy that you're having ujana ni kama moshi you won't be that energetic forever. So, um, if, to my application, before they before they call you for that interview, at least have somewhere. Yeah, by the end of the day, you are sure that you'll get your punch, you are thou in a day. So, personally, I've, I tried it, it works. So, um, then I'm, uh, alongside. Kenyan youth, I know they don't have a problem. Just talk, live well with your parents. And whenever you have something you want to actualize in that farm of our parents, hmm? having that uh, good relationship with our parents, hmm? getting a small piece of land to do, to exercise farming, I think would be a big deal. So Kenyan youth, you just need to sober up, hmm? live well, uh, with the, the parents and the community so that now when you want like to do farming now you see um you can have that heck of land or two before you get your permanent um, employment you can at least earn your living yeah so not all uh, needs 
uh, of uh, Kenyan youth or not even Kenyan youth can be met by our parents. Especially when we are now done with academics. Muzazi now saying like I want um telling your parent I want five hundred, I want to to refill my I mean to to purchase a data package for I you know it won't work. Yeah. So we need to we need to think big and uh, accept the fact that we want we all want fit in those government offices. Yeah. Like that, I think uh, that is done. Yes, yes. Yes. Thank, thank you, thank you so much uh, yes. for the word. Uh, even uh, you, 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 Unique Ombati is saying that uh, she is following the conversation. All right, and uh, yeah. So, Emmanuel, I, I want to say thank you for your time uh, mm -hmm. to grace this set, and. Um, I wish you the best in all your endeavors. Thank you. And uh, patana malisu patana. <laughs> yeah, well, well, well. Let us work for the community. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Even as we go and empower the community, because that yeah. is where we usually meet. Yeah. True. Uh, I'll meet. I'll see you. I'll see you soon. soon. See you soon. All right. Thank you for the invite. Um, see you soon. All right. So, viewer, I want to say thank you for taking your time uh, to join this show. I hope you've learned uh, a thing or two from this uh, discussion. And uh, it is my hope that you are going to apply the lessons learned. Uh, even in applying it, it uh, to your daily life. All right. So, uh, I'll see you next time, even as we host another amazing guest, Asante. <laughs>